This guy has a, a presence all of his own. Let's get up my good friend, Richard Lee. Talking 
people. I don't think so. It's all false. You know, even you're accusing me of doing something I did not do. Mr. Schwarzenegger, I didn't do it. I gave them jello pudding box. <laughs> what do you think this is? The Jerry Springer show? <laughs> this is the Dr. Phil show. Yes, <sighs> Oh And and no, you know, I I don't think. I did not do it. All I, I keep seeing women that can't help it. I just cannot help it. I got, I got to touch all these women's boobies. <laughs> Dr. Phil. No, well, I guess that's my time. So. And, uh, yeah, and Kylie's bad, Kylie's bad. Kylie's so bad. Robbie Dow just got fired and had work at Jack in the Box. That was pretty bad. That was bad. And Kylie's bad, Kylie's bad. Kylie's so bad. McDowell's happy me, I'm not so happy no more. That was pretty bad. That was bad. And Kylie's bad, Kylie's bad. Kylie's so bad. AMPM was bought by 7 11. That was pretty bad. That is bad. That is bad. He's good. Yeah, Kami's bad. Kami's bad. Kami's so bad. No, Mother Nature had to get a job at Hooters. That is pretty bad. That is bad. I believe that's all, folks. Redcoats. He decided he's going to throw his hand out in the comedy field and try it all out. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up for the very funny Gabriel Francisco. Hi. No, I'm not. I'm Gabriel Francisco. Uh, so I do this uh, weird thing when I get nervous where I become oh, Adam nervous. Sandler. So I'll, like, I'll be at a party and I'll see a pretty girl and I'll walk up and I'll say, hi, how are you? And she'll say, I hate you. No. And without like batting an eye or like missing a beat, I just go, I'm sorry. I don't know what I was thinking. I thought, yeah, maybe yeah, I could uh, come over here and I talk with you. Uh, but I was mistaken. <laughs> So I'm just going to give you one of these. Hey, go, yeah, go, and I'll be on my way. Okay, here I go. But the funny thing is that the opposite can happen just as easily because if I get too confident, I become Matthew McConaughey. So like I'll walk up and I'll see the girl. And I'll say, hi, how are you? And she'll say, hi, how are you? Well, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> Are we talking at parties, or are parties talking at us? <laughs> what do you see you get naked? Get out of here, play the bongos. All right, all right. <laughs> you guys think everybody in Matthew McConaughey's family sounds like him? Wouldn't that be the best? Like, hold on, I gotta take this, my sister's son. All right, all right, all right, I'm a little nephew doing. All right, all right, all right, Uncle Matt, how are you? I'm all right, all right, all right. <laughs> How little cheek guys doing in your class? You doing good with the little ladies? I'm doing all right, Uncle Matt. Do what you told me to do the other day in class. Took my shirt off. All right, you gotta take your shirt off. <laughs> Too bad the teacher ain't put uh, my shirt back on, though. Uh, government's always gonna try and keep you down, little man, but you know what I say? When life gives you lemons, you gotta take your shirt off. <laughs> I'm tired of people always telling me to go to music festivals that sound like the worst experience ever. Or like, Gabriel, man, you gotta come out to Coachella, it's the best. And I'm like, I don't know, how much is it? I'm like, well, it's $400. I'm like, $400? I can't afford to feed myself. $400 for what? Like, no, no, it's worth every penny, it's the best. Because this year there's 80 bands playing, and you only like three of them. <laughs> that, sounds, that sounds like a horrible, I don't want to do that. No, no, it gets better, because all three of those bands, they're playing on three separate stages at the same time. So you can't enjoy any of the shows. No, this is this has to be wrong. No, no, it gets really listen because it takes place in the middle of the desert for three days. It's a thousand degrees and every day feels worse than the last. I don't want to do this 
face at all. No, no listen, listen, please, please. Because you get to stand shoulder to shoulder with complete strangers packed in like sardines, and you get to rub your body against their hairy, sweaty bodies that smell like rotten meat. It's beautiful. It, uh, nah, that sounds like a nightmare. No, no, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Like, that, the northern lights are beautiful. That sounds horrible. And they get mad. They go, you know what, man? You just don't appreciate music. And they storm off. And I'm like, you're kidding me. That's like if I offered to shove your face into a tree over and over again for three hours. And the moment you objected, I went, man, you just don't appreciate nature. <laughs> that was ridiculous. There's a bunch of stoners anyways. I always thought like maybe a... I always wondered if maybe Shaggy and Scooby weren't actually stoners. Maybe it was all just a cover to get them out of having to do any real work. Because they, because they hate their jobs. It's like, why, Scoob? I gotta solve this mystery, man. Are they gone? Yeah, no, fuck that. I'm not going in there. Ghosts? 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 No. We're gonna stand in the closet, scream, knock some shit over, and say we saw something. They're not gonna know the difference. They're not gonna know the difference. But does that mean too, like when Velma tagged along, that I pissed them off more because then they had to keep their charade up that much longer? She's like, Jinkies, guys, I think I found something. Son of a bitch, are you fucking kidding me? Like, so what would you find, Vel? This is stupid. What are we doing? Perpetually solving mysteries for 50 years? And what's with this music? The other day I went into a doorway and I came out on the adjacent side of the hall. I had just exited. What does that mean? Are we going to hit the coast? Where else are we going to hit the coast? We got to hit the coast. I'm glad that you can talk because if you couldn't talk, I would. Like, so what's maybe it was old man Jenkins, Vel? Because if you couldn't talk, I would go fucking crazy. <laughs> When I get ready to die, I want to put everything in my house in like a crazy mismatch system that doesn't make any sense. So when they find my body, it appears like I'm way crazier than I actually was. <laughs> Just as I'm about to cross over to the other side, I'm going to dial 911, leave the phone off the hook, and die. With the happiness of knowing that soon my home will be filled with confused police officers. Just like, he kept his condoms in the fridge. <laughs> What the hell was he into? All my furniture is gonna be nailed on the walls. The floors will be lined with mirrors. All the windows are gonna be nailed shut too, but it's not gonna matter because I'll remove the glass. There's gonna be shower curtains all over my home except around my shower. Dehumidifiers next to humidifiers. 30 crates of peanut butter. And no milk. And then, and then, the straw that will break the camel's back, they'll enter my restroom and they'll realize, I have the toilet paper backwards. Chief's gonna hate me, he's gonna be like, this sick son of a bitch. As my off-brand humored soul contently dances its way to heaven. Is it sad how much joy the fantasy of that joke brings to me? The answer is yes, and the amount of joy is way too much joy. You guys ever ask a, a friend from another country to do an American accent for you? Yeah. It's borderline crazy offensive. They're like, okay, Gabriel, I do not normally do this, but I like you. I will do this for you if you are my friend. If you are my friend. And they're like, I have an American accent. I am just like you. Baseball, apple pie, Walmart, getting fat. I don't like my wife, I but I won't divorce her. I'll just have her assassinated because I'm an American. I have a gun. We all have guns. Big tits, muscles, dude, like, totally, whatever, literally, literally, literally. <laughs> I'm like, stop, you robot. We don't sound like that. They are my fucking tits. We just do all of those things. <laughs> the word. Uh, you know what makes me sad is that some of those stereotypes are really true. Uh, you know what I do when I'm sad? Have you guys seen Zoolander? Yeah? When I get sad, I like to picture what it would sound like if Derek Zoolander and Hansel tried to have a serious conversation, just like get really deep about things. You know? I don't know, Hansel. I just feel like... Maybe there's more to life than the Derek Zoolander Center for Kids Who Can't Read Good. Hansel be like... Why, why, why? From man, what my animals? There's no negativity in Shanghai Hansel. I know.
But the other day I saw Interstellar, and it made me feel like 